My name is Justin Brock, and I'm going to explain to you health insurance options um, for individuals looking for individual health insurance right now. I want to let you know what options are available, not just the options that we have, but you know all different you know cases and options and what they entail, and just kind of kind of briefly go over them. The reason that I'm doing this is because uh, we have a Medicare agency and we've been servicing clients for a long time and we've you know, always figured out that there are some people going on to Medicare whose spouses or relatives may not be on Medicare yet and we just wanted to be able to help them. So we started doing the health insurance. It turns out there's a lot of confusion in it um, and it is rightfully so. It's a very confusing market. So just going to go over your different options, okay? So um, this is not... We're not, we're not going to do it state specific or area specific, so I'm just going to be general in these terms. But you have your ACA plans. Let me see if I can get this. Well, my marker's dead, so hold on just a second. Here we go. Here's a better marker. So we got ACA plans. You call it Obamacare. Okay. Um, basically, in every area, there's at least one company offering Obamacare plans. And with those plans, you would get, uh, you know, you can see if you qualified for a subsidy, which would be based on age, um, your household income, how many people are in your household and on your tax return. And so some people do qualify for a big subsidy, some people don't. Um, a lot of it's just based off of, you know, situation and, and, and uh, you know, I have seen a lot of people in that age bracket of 60 to 64 that are retired um, do okay because their income drops and uh, they're a little bit older so they get a better subsidy. Um, however, you do have to be getting those plans during an open enrollment period um, or a special enrollment period so you can't just get on one at any time. So that's option number one. Um, we, we always check that. Um, then you have um, ACA uh, plans that meet minimum essential coverage but don't take the subsidy so you might uh, I'm not going to name the name of this company but there's one you know here that's very common but the prices can be very expensive because they have to meet all the minimum essential coverage requirements of Obamacare but they're not taking any subsidies so that's we'll call that uh, ACA off exchange plans off exchange um, there's only one in Mississippi uh, and it's you know a lot of people are having to change off of it because it, it is very expensive so we'll go down to the third option this is short term medical so uh, a lot of people were looking at these types of plans because, let me back up and see if you can get in here, because maybe, they, this, maybe this one is too expensive or maybe, um, maybe they can't get on that plan because they're not you know, qualifying in an open enrollment period. So these plans were designed to cover gaps in coverage of like three month gaps or things like that. Well, what's happened is a lot of people are using them as an alternative to these based on price and enrollment periods. So this short-term medical has become a good alternative. Now, you can only buy it right now, which this is about to change because uh, President Trump and Congress finally passed something that said that you can get this for 12 months at a time or, or close to 12 months at a time. But right now, you're buying it in three month blocks. However, there are some companies that will go ahead and underwrite the entire 12 month block in four three month policies. And they're just trying to do as much as they can to work within the law, but still provide the best options for you. So that's been a very good option. Normally with these, you have a deductible, you pay your cost up to that deductible. After the deductible, you might have an 80-20 coinsurance, and then after a certain amount, it pays everything up to, you know, a, a million dollars per term or two million, just depends on the company. We have one that's very good right now that uh, uses uh, Aetna's Open Choice PPO. Um, so it, it, does, it is 
it is subscribing to a good network um, that is accepted pretty widely. So that can be an option. Um, number four, and this is what um, some people are finding that makes the most sense for them. It just kind of depends. This is not something that we jump to to recommend right away, but it is something that some people have decided to do. And that is a hospital hospital indemnity. Okay. Normally, these plans aren't very robust, but there are a couple of plans out there, a couple of hospital indemnity plans that have a lot of hospital coverage. Then they have decent outpatient surgery benefits. They have benefits for going to the doctor. A lot of them have no deductible, so you don't have to meet something before it starts paying. Um, a lot of them have no mandatory network, so you can go to any you know physician that will take it or file it for you. Normally with these, if you do get one, you need a cancer policy because there are some holes for outpatient cancer treatment. Um, but this can be an affordable option that's a whole lot better than going without coverage, which is what we see too many people having to do. Um, you know, it's having some coverage. Now these two options right now don't, they don't meet the minimum essential coverage requirement. So what that means is they're still subject to the tax penalty. But, you know, when you look at it, uh, a lot of times people say, well, with the savings difference, I'd rather pay the penalty. Or you have some people that say, um, you know, for some reason they might not owe the penalty. There are some things called hardship exemptions to where if the ACA bronze plan is costing more than 8.05% of your household income, then you should qualify for a hardship exemption and not have to pay the penalty. Uh, you would have to consult a CPA on that or a tax professional because they would have to figure out whether you qualified for that or not, but that is how some people are navigating that circumstance. Also, the individual mandate was ended January 1st of 2019. So that means that um, next year there is no tax penalty. Right now there is for 2018, but it is prorated based on the months that you don't have that coverage. So like if someone retired at the end of May, well, for the first five months they had coverage. So if they did pay a penalty, it would be for the last seven months, not for the full year. Okay, now there's one plan that is a workaround to this, or one type of plan, and that is the final plan here, and that is a health care Sharing Ministry, an HCSM, Healthcare Sharing Ministry. There are several companies out there, or, or not companies, organizations, and uh, I believe, you know, I don't know how they feel about me naming all of them, but you hear some of them on the American Family Radio, you hear them, hear about them on TV now, on Sirius XM, and they're, a lot of them gaining a lot of popularity. One of them has, I believe, over 300,000 members right now. Um, and, and they can be very good. The prices can be very good, um, you know, and, and they do meet, they don't meet the minimum essential coverage, but they exempt you from the tax penalty. They exempt you from the Affordable Care Act law. So at least at the end of this year, this might be a good option for you. There are some membership fees there. Also, these three plans here can discriminate against pre-existing conditions. Now, for someone who's perfectly healthy, that's irrelevant. You know, um, for someone who has, you know, had a pre-existing condition ten years ago um, that they're not being treated for anymore, that's probably not going to be an issue either. But you know, if somebody comes to me and they had a heart attack, you know, last year or something like that, it's probably not going to be my choice to do something like this. I'm going to be trying to do one of these. But if they can't get one of those, it's better to have some coverage than no coverage. So we just figure out the situation and try to navigate it to the best of our ability to help that person have the best coverage they can have. So what we recommend is give us a call. I'm going to put the number right up here on the screen after I'm done with the video at 1-800-462-3980. 3980 We can actually offer this one this one, this one, and this one. So four of the five options up here we can do.
and we have in some of these we have multiple more you know I might have three of these three of these and two of these so you know and then of course there's only one of these right now but we uh, we have plenty of options for people if we can't do it it pretty much can't be done if there is those few people that uh, need help that we can't provide, I can at least point you in the right direction of where you go, where you need to go to get that help. So give me a call, 1-800-462-3980. My name is Justin Brock. I appreciate you watching this video. Please go over and like our Facebook page. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.